hello, hello and welcome to my stream. Uh, first of all, uh, before I start, uh, please, uh, please confirm if uh, you can see me, if you can hear uh, my voice, if everything works uh, fine with the connection. And uh, if, uh, technically speaking, everything is fine, uh, we can proceed uh, with the with the lesson. So I hope that uh, you can uh, hear my voice and uh, everything uh, related uh, to the quality of the video is working fine. So, uh, okay, okay. N now, uh, we can start with our uh, very important lesson, uh, which is uh, a kind of a preparation for our camp uh, dedicated to practical decision making. Uh, probably most of you know that uh, this uh, camp uh, about practical decision making will start uh, next week in Friday. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to speak about uh, a very interesting aspect uh, related to the decision making and uh, these are the so-called uh, moves of first necessity. This is a concept uh, that I have learned uh, from, from my uh, teacher, Grandmaster Viktor Gavrikov. Uh, unfortunately, he uh, passed away a few years ago. Uh, but uh, in my training sessions with him, uh, I have uh, learned this uh, very interesting concept. And uh, since then, uh, all these moves of first necessity uh, allowed me to take uh, very uh, good practical decision uh, practical decisions during the game i hope that after this lesson uh, the same will be valid for you so uh, let's uh, see what what is uh, what are the moves of first necessity what is all about uh, the most important thing uh, related uh, to the moves of first necessity is to be able to prioritize uh, the strategically important tasks. Uh, this is the ability uh, to identify uh, what is the most important element in the position. And uh, only when uh, detecting uh, the main and most important element in the position, uh, you will be able to find uh, the moves of first necessity. Uh, you're, you're going to see that uh, we can apply uh, this concept in all uh, the stages of the game, in the opening uh, moves of first necessity, uh, allow you uh, to, to be as flexible as possible and make good opening choices. Uh, moves of first necessity uh, allow you to uh, build uh, a reliable opening repertoire. Uh, in, in complicated middle games and end games, uh, very often this concept will uh, uh, will make easier for you uh, to to get through a complicated position. But uh, okay, uh, let's uh, start uh, with a concrete example, uh, which is related to the opening. For, for example, uh, let's take a look at the King's Indian defense. Maybe uh, it will be better to uh, look from Black's perspective. So d4, knight f6, c4, g6, a typical uh, King's Indian position g3 uh, now uh, short castle bishop g2 d6 uh, short castle knight c6 knight c3 and uh, okay maybe uh, all of you uh, know this position uh, as a main uh, theoretical tabia in king's indian defense and here uh, it's clear that uh, black has many ways uh, to play uh, for example e5 uh, is one of the main moves uh, also bishop f5, bishop g4, but the, the main plan uh, is related to the preparation of the advance b7, b5. So uh, here um, most of the uh, players go a6 immediately and for a good reason. Uh, but uh, according to the theory, uh, there is another move, uh, also rook b8 and then a6 and b5. Now, first of all, rook b8 and then a6, uh, bishop d7, b5. M maybe uh, I can uh, ask you the following question and you can write your answer in the chat. Uh, what do you think is more precise to start with a6 
and uh, then uh, bishop d7 and rook b8 or first uh, go for rook b8 this is a question of move order and uh, here you should be able to prioritize maybe i can give you 30 seconds just to consider the different options and uh, after that we can continue because this is really a an important question Yes, if you have some idea uh, about the correct answer, uh, you can just uh, write, write it in the chat. I will be very uh, curious to, to know uh, what uh, you think about uh, the move of the, uh, in this position. Maybe some of you are playing this position uh, with black uh, or for white. Okay. Uh, I see that uh, so far uh, there are no uh, ideas uh, about uh, Black's, uh, Black's play in this position. And uh, here I will explain why the move A6 uh, is the most uh, flexible and uh, the most uh, precise uh, move. So uh, why we should start with the move A6? Uh, because uh, in any case, in any case, uh, this this pawn will will land on the a6 square. Otherwise, it will be impossible to play b5. What about the bishop, guys? Uh, the bishop uh, will, in any case, the bishop will occupy the d7 square. Otherwise, uh, b5 would be uh, quite risky because this c6 knight uh, is unprotected. So uh, I can say that uh, these two moves, a6 and uh, bishop d7 are moves of first necessity. Concerning the rook, I am not sure if the move uh, rook b8 is a move of first necessity, because uh, depending on the concrete circumstances, uh, this, uh, this rook uh, can be very well placed on the a file, and uh, you are going to see some concrete examples. Therefore, uh, if here in, in the opening you need to decide on the move order, you should uh, try to prioritize the moves of first necessity. A6 will be played in any case, because um, in any case uh, B5 is impossible without A6, and Bishop D7 is uh, quite an obvious move, because uh, the C6 knight needs to be protected, and then uh, you can play rook b8, but you can play b5 immediately depending on white's concrete reaction. Uh, here, uh, th that's why he, in this position a6 uh, is the best move, and I, I'm going to show uh, a concrete line in which uh, this difference works quite well for black. Let's say uh, bishop f4, bishop d7 is the, is the best move. F once again, uh, you should prefer bishop d7 over rook b8 because uh, in, in case of rook b8 uh, white has uh, rook c1 this is the entire uh, strategical point behind bishop f4 white is freeing the c1 square for the for the rook uh, and uh, whenever black goes for b5 without preparation then knight d5 is possible and uh, you see that uh, after the possible exchange of the pawns, white can uh, build uh, an annoying pressure uh, on the C file. This is uh, a very uh, typical idea. Uh, for example, knight takes d5 uh, is not a good idea because of c takes d5 and uh, you see the pressure uh, against the c7 pawn. This is a backward pawn, which is a serious weakness in this position. And uh, if he uh, if he doesn't take, uh, in some case, uh, white can uh, just open the B the c file by means of c takes b5. Uh, that's why after bishop f4, rook, rook b8 is premature, uh, premature once again, and uh, uh, black should uh, start with bishop d7 uh, once again, the move of first necessity. And uh, now uh, if uh, I go for the same idea, rook c1, uh, what should be uh, black's reaction? Do you need rook b8 in this position? Uh, 
does black need uh, to play uh, rook b8 uh, in order to uh, prepare b5? Okay, maybe uh, you can consider uh, a bit and uh, I will be waiting for some of your answers. a6 and bishop d7 are on the board uh, and uh, yeah uh, as uh, John Wooker uh, is uh, saying uh, in the chat uh, the move b5 can be played in one go because uh, we, we saved the tempo on rook b8 and uh, here uh, b5 is quite uh, is quite interesting uh, that's why uh, after for example c takes b5 a takes b5 knight takes b5 uh, black has Rook takes e2. Uh, this was uh, a question of move order, but uh, Black uh, has chosen uh, exactly the right move order in this position. Uh, by delaying uh, the move Rook b8, uh, Black made uh, all this idea possible. So uh, in this uh, example, you see how the moves of first necessity uh, work in the opening. Uh, Let's take a look uh, at another uh, more complicated uh, opening position and uh, probably uh, this position will be un unknown for you but it will be better because uh, in this way uh, you are going to develop your intuition. Uh, it's interesting to take the right decision in uh, un unfamiliar positions. And uh, the next example that I'm going to show is taken from the modern Benoni uh, defense. So d4, uh, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d c5. Okay, uh, the first moves are not so important. Uh, this is a, a familiar theoretical line in Benoni. Uh, knight d2 is uh, white's playing knight d2 in this position. Uh, probably uh, all of you know uh, the typical this typical idea, uh, which is called the Nimsovich maneuver. Uh, White uh, is trying to transfer his knight to the c4 square in, uh, with the idea to uh, put pressure on the d6 pawn. Later on, uh, this uh, c4 knight can be supported by uh, bishop f4, inc thus increasing the pressure uh, on d6. Or uh, White's other idea is to go for a central expansion by means of f4 followed by e5. So knight d2 is quite an interesting uh, thematic idea in Benoni. And uh, of course, uh, Black has a wide choice of moves in this position. Uh, this is by no means a theoretical discussion uh, in Benoni, but uh, I would uh, just uh, suggest uh, suggest an, a, a question uh, which, uh, which is uh, designed to improve your feeling of the position and uh, your, your uh, decision making. So uh, knight a6, uh, knight a6 uh, is the move uh, we are going to deal with. And here uh, it's uh, interesting uh, what you are going to choose. I, I, I will provide you two possibilities, f3 and rook and king h1, sorry. Which one of these moves is a move of first necessity and uh, are, are you going to start with f3 or uh, you are going to start with king h1? Once again, I, I'm going to give you some time to uh, consider the, the different options. And uh, I'm quite, quite interested uh, in your opinion about the position. Theoretically speaking, both moves are possible actually. So uh, here there is no wrong choice, I would say, but uh, I think there is a move which is objectively better. This is uh, this question is a bit uh, more difficult, but uh, I hope that uh, you are going to have some ideas. So f3 and or king h1. The, the, the ideas uh, are clear. Uh, by playing f3, we stabilize the e4 pawn, uh, we protect it, uh, and then we free the knight, uh, we prepare knight c4, and uh, by playing uh, king h1, uh, we remove the king uh, from a7 g1 diagonal, 
which can be uh, potentially dangerous. Okay, I see that uh, ma majority of you um, pref uh, uh, prefer the move uh, king h1, king, king h1, but also there are some suggestions about f3. Okay, uh, interesting. Interesting. In in the chat, I see uh, different opinions, but uh, I would suggest I would say that um, here you should start with f3. F3, uh, and uh, this is the move of first necessity in this position. Why? Uh, in order to find the move of first necessity, you should uh, detect uh, the basic, the main strategical problem in your position. And uh, if we ask ourselves, um, what is White's main strategical uh, problem? Uh, this is, of course, the development. Now, uh, the C1 bishop is stuck uh, the way of the bishop is uh, closed by the knight and without uh, developing the bishop uh, we cannot uh, we cannot complete the development therefore uh, we should prioritize uh, the development of our pieces and uh, i would say that uh, the move f3 I would say that the move f3 uh, is a move of first necessity because this move uh, directly contributes to the development. Uh, King h1 uh, can be played afterwards, but uh, also you can, in some cases, you can uh, you can play without King h1. Therefore, my, my choice would be f3 in this position. Uh, okay, let, let's, uh, let's see, uh, see what would happen if, you, if white goes for the immediate King h1. Uh, it turns out that uh, this move uh, gives black just enough time to generate some counterplay. So knight c7, a typical idea. You should uh, recon uh, with the advance b5. Uh, additionally, when you know that uh, the e4 pawn uh, can be hanging. So let's say a4, rook b8, uh, now f3. Uh, now you play this f3 move, but uh, instead of the useful knight c4, uh, you have started with uh, king h1, which can uh, cannot be so uh, useful in some cases. Here, uh, of course, uh, black can go for this typical idea, let's say b6, knight c4, and those of you who uh, know the Benoni type of positions uh, will play bishop a6 immediately just to get rid of the problematic white squared bishop. Uh, for example, the idea is bishop c4, bishop c4, and then a6 followed by b5. But uh, in another uh, possible option is a6, uh, just, uh, uh, just using the time uh, which uh, white wasted on king h1. So uh, let's say a5, uh, preventing b5, but now uh, after this move, uh, usually the b5 square gets available for one of black's pieces. And here uh, black can start with bishop d7, knight c4, knight b5, uh, and this is already a very good counterplay. Uh, in general, uh, in Benoni type of positions, uh, black is having less space, therefore all the exchanges of minor pieces are favorable for black. And uh, knight b4, knight, knight b5 is the right step in uh, this direction. Uh, for here, if you uh, would like to put additional pressure on d6 by means of bishop f4, there is a very interesting resource, which is quite typical for Benoni type of positions, knight h5. So uh, black is sacrificing a pawn in order to uh, take the dark squared bishop. Here, uh, if uh, white goes for bishop takes d6, knight d6, knight d6, uh, you will see how important uh, is the dark square strategy in Benoni type of positions. Black just uh, starts with bishop e5 and uh, of course um, the exchange is not important because after uh, knight takes e8, uh, queen h4 uh, is just giving uh, an, an almost winning advantage for black. Therefore, uh, here, as we have uh, seen, uh, starting with king h1, which is not a move of first necessity, provides black with more than enough counterplay. And now, uh, when uh, we have seen uh, black's ideas, let's uh, take a look at f3. f3, now, once again, black is going for knight c7, 
a4 but it turns out that i will be just in time to play knight c4 and bishop f4 if needed and here uh black is going for b6 uh, quite uh, naturally knight c4 bishop a6 otherwise bishop f4 is coming and uh, it's not clear how black uh, is going to uh, protect the d6 pawn uh, only bishop f8 is possible but uh, okay this is uh, already quite passive so bishop a6 bishop g5 uh, in general uh, white uh, would, would like to put his bishop on e3 in this structure but uh, why he's he starts with bishop g5 just to uh, provoke h6 uh, which is uh, a kind of a weakness h6 uh, bishop e3 and here uh, it's clear that uh, at some point he, he wants to play uh, black wants to play bishop takes c4 get, getting rid of the white squared bishop bishop c4 and then uh, a6 probably rook b8 and b5 but uh, and uh, if i give you two options how are you going to start bishop takes c4 immediately or uh, you you are going to start with rook b8 uh, once again a question of move order but uh, if you are familiar uh, with uh, the ideas that uh, we have uh, discussed so far i i would say that uh, this question would be very easy for you So uh, here I see a question. Can we say that f3 also prevents a possible attack based on knight g4, uh, queen h4, bishop e5? Yeah, to some extent, uh, this is uh, correct. Uh, of course, um, uh, the move f3 has a disadvantage uh, as well because it weakens uh, a, a bit uh, the dark squares. So uh, here, how to start? Bishop takes c4 or rook b8. What is the move of first necessity? Which move will be played in any case? This is uh, the important thing to consider. And uh, okay, it's uh, quite clear that uh, in any case, uh, we are going to play bishop c4. Therefore, uh, it's, it would have been logical uh, to start uh, with uh, bishop c4 immediately. So bishop c4, bishop c4, and uh, and then uh, a6. Yeah, uh, Xavier uh, Saint Denis uh, is uh, correct. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, saying the correct because uh, if we don't play bishop c4 immediately, at some point maybe White uh, would um, go with the knight somewhere else. Uh, yeah, and now. Uh, a6 uh, then uh, at some point uh, the rook uh, can be left on a8 we can play without rook b8 but bishop c4 and a6 uh, are uh, quite obvious moves here uh, of course uh, if white knows uh, the strategical ideas well he will keep uh, the advantage and uh, i will briefly show you uh, how to play in such kind of positions uh, Queen d2, that's why we have started with bishop g5 to provoke h6. Now this move can, comes with a tempo because the h6 pawn is attacked. So king h7. And here uh, it's clear that uh, for white it's not so easy to play in the center. Typically in Benoni uh, we have two main ideas. Put pressure on d6 or uh, play in the center by means of f4, e5, sometimes uh, f4, f5, but in this position uh, it's not so easy. But exactly in this pawn structure, uh, when black has committed uh, to b6, especially in this position, we have another uh, thematic idea that uh, you should know rook b8 and in this way uh, the, the rook uh, moves away from the range of the bishop and uh, at the same time white is preparing the advance b4 so let's say queen d7 b4 and here a typical structure structure would arise after b5 bishop e2 c4 and now a5 i would say that this position is strategically winning for white why? Because now uh, black doesn't have any counterplay. His uh, queen side is closed, so no counterplay on the queen side, and uh, white can uh, prepare his central expansion. The main uh, 
the main idea which allow, allows us to do so is just to transfer the bishop to c2 in order to uh, protect the e4 pawn then the rook will come to e1 bishop d4 f4 and uh, of course uh, white is going to execute the advance e5 under uh, the best uh, circumstances so um, even though bishop c4 is objectively a more precise move um, we can see we can see that uh, white keeps an advantage in the game uh, was played rook b rook b8 rook e1 now queen d7 w once again uh, black uh, delays the move of first necessity bishop c4 we know that uh, the most precise move or order uh, would be bishop takes c4 and then a6 and b5 just trying to uh, create some counterplay on the queen side but uh, black's uh, black uh, black chooses wrong priorities and uh, you will see that now white will have an additional option queen d2 and now after uh, king h7 which is also not a move of first necessity black didn't play bishop c4 now uh, white has an additional option at his disposal just making use of the fact that uh, this uh, c4 knight is still on the board how to uh, how to proceed do you have an idea guys after king h7 how uh, we can make use of the fact that uh, our knight is still alive and black has delayed the move bishop takes c4 if you have some ideas you can uh, write in the chat yeah i, I see in the chat that uh, this uh, c7 knight uh, is horrible of course this is one of the main uh, strategical problem problems in uh, Benoni structures uh, but uh, we should we should also say that uh, in some cases this knight helps black uh, because uh, it makes diffic more difficult for white to carry out the typical idea f4 e5 and here okay i see the suggestion knight a3 also b3 uh, actually uh, this uh, all these moves are possible but uh, maybe not knight a3 because uh, black will be happy to exchange his uh, white square bishop but b3 is a typical idea in this pawn structure uh, as far as i remember it was also described uh, in one of the books of um, mark dvoretsky because now if uh, black uh, white black tries to take take the knight we can recapture with the pawn uh, those uh, strengthening uh, the pawn structure this is a typical idea that you should know and then uh, we can just uh, play rook b1 a5 a takes b6 uh, uh, put, uh, creating an, a weakness uh, on uh, b6 but there is also a more in interesting idea uh, which is uh, uh, active tactical idea and here white played e5 you see that the knight is supporting this advance uh, of course a bishop takes c4 would run into e takes <clears throat> f6 so d takes e5 d6 in this point knight a8 was played uh, probably a black should have played knight e6 but uh, you see that knight e5 is working now and uh, a possible wine would be uh, queen b7 bishop takes a6 queen takes a6 knight takes f7 and uh, of course uh, white uh, has an overwhelming advantage in this position after knight a8 uh, th the game is uh, pretty much decided knight takes e5 uh, rook takes e5 bishop a6 uh, and uh, here uh, white has uh, an almost winning position strong pest pawn and uh, a bishop pair uh, in in an open position black pieces uh, Wack uh, coordination so uh, here uh, white is pretty much winning the game uh, followed with knight e8 bishop e f4 take take bishop d4 check now he took uh, the pawn but uh, it turns out that uh, knight b5 uh, is uh, just enough because of the pin uh, along uh, this diagonal 
So, uh, so far uh, we have been uh, looking uh, at how um, moves of first necessity can help you uh, to improve uh, your opening, uh, how uh, these moves uh, can help you to take uh, the best decisions in the opening. Now, um, we are going to we are going to look at another position which is not exactly related to the opening uh, even though uh, the action uh, took place in the opening so uh, this will be the game Vugar Gashimov against Boris Gelfand and this is a critical position okay you can uh, you can uh, say this is an opening position which is true but uh, here you should know, you should take a critical decision uh, how to start? Gelfand is playing with black and he's, uh, he decided to go for the immediate c5. Uh, do you think that this is the correct decision? And uh, if you think that this is not the correct decision, how you would uh, prefer to, uh, to play with black? What about c5? It looks tempting. You can write your answers in the chat uh, and uh, just don't calculate variations. Uh, just try to uh, decide uh, to take a decision which is based on intuition. This is uh, what matters here. C5 immediately or something else. Okay, so far, uh, no ideas, even though, uh, intuitively speaking, uh, the decision shouldn't be uh, so difficult uh, to take. Okay, I already see uh, ideas, uh, a6 first, g6. Cheryl is uh, saying that black seems to lack development, uh, then uh, he should start with uh, castling. Yeah, you see that uh, here uh, actually the move uh, is uh, very easy and uh, of course we should start to, uh, with castle because this is the move of first necessity. Uh, sooner or later we should um, complete the development but uh, but why uh, even so strong players like Gelf Gelfand are make uh, are making mistakes uh, in such positions uh, of course uh, all, all of us we know the general principles we know that uh, the development should be completed we should we know that all the pieces should participate uh, into the game uh, we know about the coordination but very often very often uh, dur during a pract during practical games we get uh, tempted to to play something active uh, which seems promising and uh, we delay uh, the move of first necessity here uh, logically speaking it's clear that black should start by castling and then decide uh, whether to go for c5 c6 uh, or start with knight d7 or play a6 first uh, then uh, you can decide, but uh, it's uh, very difficult to uh, omit uh, this uh, natural move, castling. But the problem is that uh, something, uh, sometimes uh, we think that we have seen something better, we get tempted and uh, we neglect the move of first necessity. Uh, if uh, if you want to neglect and uh, to to play something different, which is not a move of first necessity, make sure uh, that uh, you have uh, calculated everything very precisely. But uh, don't trust your calculation blindly because um, uh, we are not computers, and uh, there is a high probability uh, that uh, we have missed something. Uh, always. Uh, uh, always be aware of some calculation mistakes when you neglect a move of first necessity. For example, probably uh, 
probably uh, Gelfand uh, was thinking that C5 works correct, he calculated a lot and he trusted his calculations. But let's see what happened. So he played C5, Gashimov uh, went for knight F5 and uh, here uh, I cannot uh, exactly fig figure out um, what uh, where exactly um, Gelfand went wrong in his calculations. Probably he was uh, thinking that uh, c4 is working in this position because uh, the knight is hanging uh, and after knight g7 he has king f8 probably he uh, calculated very long lines in order to uh, to make this c5 advance work and here uh, after it turns out that uh, knight g7 uh, is simple and after king f8 uh, bishop f5 now uh, it transpires that uh, black cannot uh, take the knight because after uh, king takes g7 uh, white can just play queen g4 and bishop c8 of course uh, in your calculations uh, it's uh, it's very um, it's very easy to miss uh, this move uh, bishop f5 bishop f5 and uh, to miss the idea of queen g4 but uh, if you play uh, the correct move order, if you start with uh, castle instead of c5, there will be no need uh, to make calculations. You will play uh, quickly the best move, which is entirely based on intuition. Actually, in the game, uh, Gelfand didn't play c4. He castled in this position. But here, uh, with a knight on f5, with the moves c5 and knight f5 included, uh, White has a powerful blow at his disposal. Yeah, uh, the idea is knight takes g7. I think that this is the move uh, Gelfand miscalculated initially. So here, after king takes g7, immediately queen h5. It turns out that uh, White's attack uh, is very dangerous. So uh, here... Uh, the the game continued rook h8 also there is this move f5 uh, which is losing trust me uh yeah uh, this move is losing uh, it it takes f6 uh, here uh, there is no need uh, to provide all the long computer uh, analysis uh, f5 is not a human move so rook h8 seems more natural bishop h8 king g8 and uh, maybe uh, Gelfand might have seen even knight g7 and um, he might have calculated everything uh, un until this point. And uh, now uh, he he thought, okay, I can play uh, bishop e6, uh, maybe then bishop f8, transfer the bishop to g7, knight c6, and uh, there is no uh, so so big problem. But he, uh, he missed uh, a very interesting move. And this move is e6. This move uh, can be easily missed exactly here before you play uh, c5. And here it turns out that uh, white is already winning because uh, e6 uh, clears the e5 square for the queen. For example, uh, he should take with the pawn because if he takes with the bishop, bishop takes e6, then uh, queen e5 is possible. And after bishop f6, queen g3, the king is getting mated. After e6, f takes e6, uh, the game uh, was immediately finished. Uh, queen g4, king f7, queen g7, and uh, white is winning. So uh, here, uh, I now I'm going to show the last game which has something to do with the opening and then uh, we uh, we shall take a look at some middle game positions in uh, which uh, you are going to use uh, the moves of first necessity so uh, this is really a very interesting uh, game uh, which uh, inspired me a lot this is the game Risto uh, Nietzschevsky against Viktor Gavrikov. Uh, and I think that after looking at this game, uh, you will have a very interesting opening wine in your repertoire just to surprise your opponent, uh, especially if you're a Sicilian player. So Gavrikov is playing with black, e4, c5, knight c3. Yeah, th this is uh, 
very common. White can play either the close Sicilian or uh, just f4 and go for the Grand Prix uh, attack. e6 uh, was played and here f4. Here, uh, in this uh, at this point, uh, maybe um, you know that uh, black has a variety of options. Knight c6, d5 is possible. Uh, this one has been covered uh, in many uh, opening books. Uh, yeah, this is uh, quite a topical position. a6, b5 is possible, but here... Uh, Gavrikov used his concept of uh, moves of first necessity to find something really original. At this point, he asked himself, what is Black's main strategical problem? And actually, uh, when you think logically, you will see that uh, Black's main strategical problem in this position is uh, developing the king sites uh, with his last move f4 uh, white is making the move knight f6 impossible because uh, of e5 uh, yeah uh, this uh, this knight can be uh, harassed and uh, knight the immediate knight f6 is not desirable therefore uh, gavrikov started uh, thinking of how he can uh, first develop his king side and then uh, decide on everything else uh, he decided to apply the concept uh, we are speaking about, moves of first necessity. And quite strangely, he came up uh, with the move knight e7, which is a very, very interesting and, uh, and a rare idea, I would say. Mm, you can try this move in your own games, and uh, after analyzing a bit, uh, you will uh, see that this move is really underestimated. W what is the logic uh, behind knight e7? Uh, actually, we, pri we prioritize our kingside development. Uh, first of all, Gavrikov wants to play knight c6, bishop e7 and castle. Uh, and then uh, he will decide on everything else. Uh, this d7 pawn can go to d6, but he can go on d5 uh, if needed. Uh, depending on the circumstances, uh, you are going to decide where to go for b6 and bishop b7 or uh, just to play a6 and b5. But uh, this uh, this will uh, be clear only when uh, you, you complete all the necessary moves, the moves of first necessity. And here uh, it's important to prioritize the development of the king side. Let's take a look at how the game continued. So knight f3. And here the remarkable knight c6, an idea that I like a lot. So uh, d3 was played in the game, d5 in one go, now uh, now it, this works. Uh, just uh, a little deviation, I want uh, also to discuss this move g3, uh, let's uh, suppose that uh, uh, white is playing against d5 uh, because with the bishop on g2 we will hardly uh, play for the immediate d5 but in this case uh, Gavrikov play, uh, played once knight d4 bishop g2 knight c6 and then very quickly he uh, completed the development with quite a decent position so uh, the main game continued d3 d5 e5 bishop e7 g3 okay here uh short castle uh can be logical but uh gavrikov decided uh, to use something concrete since uh the white king is still in the center black can play the immediate b5 taking a lot of space uh on the queen side in this position a knight takes b5 uh, does not work because of queen a5 and if knight c3 then d4 uh, just winning a piece so bishop g2 b4 knight e2 knight d7 and you see that uh, black managed to complete uh, his pieces and all uh, in, in quite a natural way and later on uh, he will uh, just play f6 uh, getting rid of uh, the e5 pawn uh, thus eliminating white's space advantage and of course uh, black can start progressing on the queen side uh, 
White uh, played g4 uh, with the idea to build uh, some attack on the king side, but as we have uh, just uh, pointed out, f6 uh, is good enough in this position. e takes f6, knight takes f6, h3, queen c7. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, here uh, black doesn't have any pro problem whatsoever. So uh, if you uh, like the Sicilian defense and uh, against knight c3 you play e6, uh, you can definitely uh, play this idea, uh, knight e7. For sure, uh, for sure this will be a surprise for your opponent. Uh, you will take him out of the book. And uh, in this case, uh, you're going also to apply the concept of uh, moves of first necessity. Actually, uh, this move is qu quite uh, quite uh, logical uh, in response to knight c3, because uh, if white doesn't play f4, uh, here the coast Sicilian with g3 is, uh, is just uh, harmless. Uh, you have d4, d5, for example, e takes d5, e takes d5, uh, now this move d4 knight e4 knight c6 uh, black is uh, doing fine in many cases uh, he can even overtake the initiative because of the space advantage now uh, as i have uh, as i promised uh, we will start uh, we are going to deal with some uh, middle game positions in which uh, this concept of moves of first necessity should be applied also, uh, we can take a look at some endgame uh, positions as well. Let's take a look at another game of Viktor Gavrikov. This is uh, his game against uh, Kuprejcik. White is obviously winning in this position. So, uh, he has, uh, let, let's suppose that he has two moves. The first one is rook takes h7 and the second one is h4. What will be your choice? Let's uh, try to apply uh, this concept of moves of first necessity in a complex endgame position. Once again, no need to calculate. One of the ideas in our lesson is to develop uh, your decision making which is based on intuition okay uh, if you have some ideas please uh, feel free to write in the chat Yeah, I, I still uh, see some questions uh, about uh, the previous example uh, concerning the closed Sicilian. Uh, I will uh, include uh, analysis of this uh, opening. Uh, and uh, you know that uh, those of you um, who participate uh, in our camp uh, related to the decision making will get uh, the full PGM version of uh, this lecture that I'm giving right now. So uh, you, you will have this uh, opening repertoire ready. Now I see that uh, most of you suggest h4 in this position, which makes me happy actually. Yeah, uh, sooner or later, uh, this h7 pawn will disappear. And uh, of course, uh, we will try to uh, to, to push our h pawn uh, just to uh, to queen it uh, concerning the rook um, it's uh, it's not clear uh, for for the moment whether the rook should be on h6 or uh, on h7 because um, being on h6 uh, the rook is also uh, protecting the b6, b6 square thus making uh, bishop b6 idea impossible for example, if you if if you play rook h7, you should calculate bishop b6 immediately. But if you start with h4, uh, you don't need uh, to calculate bishop b6 immediately. And uh, in the game, uh, Kuprejcik uh, just took the pawn. Uh, rook takes h7, and here uh, it turns out that uh, bishop b6 actually makes a draw, which is quite which is quite funny. Uh, Let's let's take a look at the concrete variation. So bishop g5, this is what he calculated maybe. King e8, check, take, take. 
here after h4 of course uh, bishop uh, takes uh, g7 bishop takes c7 is making a draw so bishop f4 bishop c7 bishop c7 king c7 and it turns out that uh, in this uh, pawn end game uh, black is just in time to make a draw king e3 king d6 king d4 f4 in this position h4 king e6 h5 king h king f5 and uh, then this is uh, just a draw after king g5 so uh it turns out that rook h7 uh, was a bad move and uh, all of you uh, you, you pointed out the correct answer, which is h4. And let's try to calculate uh, once again. Here, black has nothing to do. He doesn't have active options. Bishop b6 is not on the table. Therefore, he plays uh, bishop d4 in this position. Rook takes h7. Now, it, it already works when we have played uh, this h4 idea, move of first necessity. So, bishop b6. And we go for the same variation. But this time, uh, white is winning because uh, black's king is not in the square of the pawn. This was the entire difference. And uh, actually, uh, those of you uh, who know uh, the moves of first necessity do not need to calculate uh, rook takes h7 at all. Uh, we know that uh, rook h7 can be played anytime, uh, but uh, h4 uh, is uh, is always in our in our favor. Th there is no uh, situation in which the pawn will stand better on h2 than on h4. Therefore, you should start with h4 without thinking, and then you will decide exactly when to uh, to take the h7 pawn because in a, in a number of occasions the rook can be better placed on h6 than on h7 this is uh, very important uh, and uh, here uh, just uh, the pure intuition uh, can help you uh, to take uh, the right decision now uh, I, I would like to show one game uh, that i have played that i have lost uh, in quite uh, quite an instructive way because I have uh, neglected uh, this uh, concept myself. So uh, here I'm playing with black. Uh, this was uh, played uh, in the Swedish uh, team championship against a uh, lower rated opponent. Uh, I had uh, 2507, uh, he had only 2226, but I was this game. Uh, my uh, my opponent played very well uh, so uh, this was a one done system e6 knight d2 and here uh, actually I played bishop d6 uh, w once again I would say that uh, if uh, black is uh, trying to play the systems based on bishop d6 uh, this is a move of first necessity and uh, you shouldn't start with c5 uh, because in this way you just give uh, your opponent additional possibilities. Therefore, bishop d6 is quite a natural reaction. Bishop g3, short castle, knight f3, c5, c3, b6, bishop d3, bishop a6, bishop takes a6, knight takes a6, knight e5, quite a typical one structure uh, those of you who want to master the one positions uh, you can just take a look at our uh, camp uh, on the one uh, opening uh, you can find it in modern chess website uh, we have discussed all these stru structures in a great detail but here uh, the topic of the lesson is a, a, a bit different so queen c7 was played f4 and uh, if uh, you were in my shoes what uh, you would have preferred in this position how to how to proceed with black uh, now uh, so, so far I, I was giving you some choice uh, I, I was saying uh, this move or this move uh, you have two options which one you are going to select but now uh, since uh, you you are already familiar with the main concept, uh, I think that you can decide by yourself.
okay first first of all uh, you should uh, in decide where is the main uh, strategic pro problem maybe some of you are familiar with this position yes Constantinos uh, th this is uh, this is the best move uh, I think uh, which I didn't play f okay first of all uh, we should uh, activate the knight so the, the knight uh, cannot be placed on a6 and uh, since this piece is out of play uh, our priority uh, should be uh, to improve the position of the knight just to bring this piece uh, into the game but uh, during the game uh, I say I told myself okay I can leave uh, with this knight actually uh, because uh, I want uh, to play uh, in some case knight e4 followed by f6 uh, and uh, I have uh, decided to prepare this idea queen b7 uh, and the idea was knight e4 f6 uh, so as I said uh, very often uh, you know uh, what is your main strategical problem you know that um, the decision of this problem shouldn't be neglected you should uh, take measures um, as soon as possible but you uh, you see another option uh, which seems natural seems good and uh, you get uh, just tempted uh, to, to play something like that uh, so uh, here my opponent castled and once again it was not uh, too late uh, to improve the position of the knight even knight c7 was possible and uh, maybe now it would have been even better because uh, let's suppose that uh, after knight takes knight e4 there will be an exchange black will recapture with the pawn and uh, the, at some point the d5 square uh, will be available for the knight okay but i played uh, knight e4 immediately mm you already know that i got tempted by this move knight takes e4 d takes e4 and now quite logically my opponent played f5 uh, when if not now uh, my knight is far away from the king side and uh, from the center and it's quite logical to start playing on the king side immediately therefore uh, f5 was very good uh, needless to say that during the game I, I was not uh, concerned at all about this move because uh, I believed in my calculation and I told myself okay f6 f6 is a very um, natural move now uh, the knight uh, will go to c4 let's say I'm going to exchange uh, the bishop then uh, it will be I, I have already many many options uh, which are possible uh, since this knight is uh, hanging uh, even b5 uh, is a possibility in this position and uh, black is better uh, for sure but um, my opponent uh, played knight g6 okay I calculated this move I, I, I thought okay nothing to worry about uh, just sorry rook fd8 uh, I just uh, put the rook on d8 uh, and the knight is hanging uh, I, 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 I still want to play bishop g3 at some point this pawn uh, will uh, get eliminated and uh, white will uh, doesn't have white will not have any um, initiative on the king side but uh, my opponent took on d6 and played knight h4 this is a move uh, that I have initially missed and now after this move it turns out that um, it turns out that I cannot coordinate my pieces and white has a pretty uh, straightforward forward attacking idea just queen g4 exchange on e6 put the knight on f5 if needed uh, bring the h pawn into motion and uh, I, ha I can I cannot do anything in this position uh, I calculated a what uh, and now uh, you can see uh, this night I, I even don't have time to activate this night finally I decided uh, to play e5 uh, just to keep his pawn on f5 because in this way I restrict the rook and the in the knight but here uh, it turns out that um, all the uh, uh, all the subtleties in the move order are, are working in his favor queen b3 queen f7 he just took on e5 take and now queen a4 
the, the knight is under attack, the pawn is uh, under attack, also my king is, ter is terribly weak, now he uh, gave a check, here uh, f6 uh, just freeing the f5 square uh, for the knight uh, and uh, Okay, later on uh, he managed uh, to convert uh, his advantage and uh, probably mm, probably I can say that uh, my, my first uh, reaction was to say that uh, I have calculated everything very well but somehow I missed the move knight h4. Uh, actually this was not the reason. Uh, missing the move uh, knight h4 was not uh, the the reason behind uh, my uh, failure in this game uh, the the reason was that i neglected the moves of first necessity i i i imagine i i i have i was thinking that uh, i i can do without activating the knight because uh, knight e4 knight and f6 is working uh, quite well and i i managed to calculate everything but it turns out that we are not we are not computers we cannot think uh, like computers and uh, in our calculations uh, always there will be some flaws and uh, you shouldn't trust your calculation so much and uh, now i want uh, to show something similar uh, once again a, a game of viktor gavrikov in in which uh, he uh, he won in a very instructive way. Just a second. Yeah, th this is the game. Uh, Viktor Gavrikov uh, against uh, John van der Wiel, famous uh, Dutch Grandmaster. Uh, so uh, we have a typical French defense, Vinaver variation. Uh, we are not going to deal with the theoretical subtleties. Uh, this line is quite typical. Uh, the important position arises uh, here. Uh, I think I have uh, shown uh, this position in one of uh, our modern chess camps, but here I I'm going to uh, speak about it uh, in a little bit a different angle. So uh, in this position, what is Black's main strategical problem and how uh, he should decide it? Maybe you, you will need some time to consider the different options. Yeah, here it's not so easy to prioritize and therefore I have left this complex example for the end. Do you have some ideas guys? Maybe those of you who participated in our uh, training camp about calculation will be able to suggest uh, the right answer. I think that it, this example was included uh, in the PGN uh, version. Okay, it's black to move, not white. White's last move was rook b, uh, rook b, queen b1. Yeah, uh, so uh, for, do, for those of you uh, who didn't uh, participate in our camp about uh, calculation, I just uh, want to make a very, very brief introduction to the indicators of danger. In this way, uh, you, are going, you, will, you will be able to prioritize um, the problems in your position. Uh, so, uh, in this camp I have uh, presented a uh, few indicators of danger uh, which will uh, lead you uh, in your uh, decision-making process. The first, uh, the first one was the critical point. Critical point 
is a piece which is not defended or a piece uh, which is uh, attacked and protect equal number of times. For example, this A3 pawn is a critical point. Um, it's, uh, it's not defended. The E5 pawn is a critical point. Uh, it is attacked once and defended once. So if there are many critical points in your camp, uh, you should expect that your opponent will make a combination. Another indicator of danger is uh, the critical construction. Uh, for example, when there is a possibility of a fork or skewer, we can uh, speak about critical construction. For example, uh, there is in Black's camp, there are two important critical constructions, d6 and c7 squares. For example, if uh, my knight lands on d6 or c7, uh, this will be a disaster. This will be a fork and therefore uh, in Black's camp there are two, two very important critical constructions. If uh, there are many critical constructions uh, in uh, the camp of your opponent, you should try to uh, look for a combination. Another important uh, indicator of danger is the opposition. For example, uh, if your queen or king is... Uh, against the, the rook of your opponent there is a, an opposition and you should act immediately to solve the problem another indicator of danger is a, a restricted mobility of a piece uh, another indicator of danger is pest pawn uh, also pin uh, is a very important indicator of danger mm. And uh, here uh, there is also something else which is also a very important indicator of danger and I call it invasion. Uh, and you, you can see that this b7 rook, this b7 rook uh, just invaded black's position. And uh, in general, when uh, a piece of your opponent invades your camp, the first thing that you should do is to uh, chase this piece away. You should uh, prioritize this task because uh, if uh, left uh, for a long time, uh, this piece can participate in different kind of combinations. So uh, here we have we don't have time to make a systematic uh, overview of the indicators of danger. Uh, those of you who are interested uh, can uh, look at our uh, training camp concerning the calculation. Uh, but in general, uh, you should prioritize uh, the problems which are related to the indicators of danger. So uh, here the best and most logical move would have been uh, bishop c6. Just uh, chasing the rook away and after rook b2 queen c7 then uh, black doesn't have uh, problems whatsoever he can just uh, proceed with castle connecting the rooks and uh, th then rook b8 in some point in some positions the e5 pawn can be vulnerable of course white has dynamic compensation because of the bishop pair quite a complicated position i would say but uh, Van der Ville told, okay, I have calculated everything, no problem whatsoever, knight c5. We already know uh, how wrong uh, is to, to think in this way. Uh, you shouldn't uh, trust uh, your calculation so much. And uh, I hope that uh, after this lesson, uh, at least uh, you will have uh, some doubts uh, when uh, you calculate uh, wrong variations, which are not uh, based uh, on... Uh, prioritizing the main strategical strategical aspects. So bishop b5 uh, was played an important intermediate move. King f8, rook b6. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, the rook remains in black's camp. And uh, here uh, you will see that uh, already it's not so easy to chase it away. For example, after queen c7, then uh, he can just take rook b7 and then a bishop takes a5 uh, you cannot take the bishop because of rook b8 this time we make use of the critical construction between the queen and the king just uh, to remind you what was a critical construction when there is a possibility of a fork or skewer the concept of indicators of danger i i have also learned uh, from victor gavrikov so, uh, 
h6 was played uh, probably he wants to play g6 and king g7 but first of all uh, black should uh, take uh, this uh, g5 square away from the bishop and here rook c1 once again following the indicators of danger with his last move white creates an opposition you see that uh, the rook is uh, against the queen and now he's uh, threatening uh, to open the position by means of c4 queen c7 bishop takes a4 knight takes a4 and of course our, our rook uh, should uh, penetrate queen c8 and here uh, Gavrikov started uh, making use of the invasion bishop takes a5 as uh, we have uh, just discussed, uh, this bishop cannot be taken because of rook b8. Therefore, van der Veel played knight c6, bishop e1, g6 uh, was played in uh, this position, and here the dynamic c4. Uh, we start using the opposition uh, between the rook and the queen. d4, quite logical, black tries to close the position rook d1 king g7 and now a question for you how are you going to make use of this uh, rook that have penetrated black's camp uh, additional uh, i i would say additional indicators of danger in this position there is an opposition uh, on the seventh rank this g6 pawn is a critical point because uh, it's attacked once and defended once this pawn uh, is pinned therefore it's not defending the g6 pawn now maybe uh, with so many indicators of danger uh, white can uh, just uh, try to find a tactical solution do you have some ideas I think that uh, with the hint uh, that I have just ga given, uh, the answer becomes uh, pretty much uh, obvious. Yeah, Alexander, this is uh, this is the correct uh, decision. Yeah, uh, I see that uh, you have already seen uh, the best idea, knight h4 knight h4 uh, with the idea of queen g6 uh, or knight g6 uh, if needed uh, you see that uh, if uh, black has sta had started with bishop c4 bishop c6 just uh, let me get back uh, to the critical position if he's played bishop c6 immediately without thinking just prioritizing uh, his uh, the solution of his problems uh, now this move uh, will not be uh, possible uh, but uh, he was tempted to, to go for the immediate knight c5 and now knight, uh, knight h4 is uh, already uh, quite a decent option and here uh, I provide many analysis but um, it turns out that uh, black cannot hold the position knight e5 was played in the game queen e4 knight d7 now rook takes d4 knight c5 and here uh, Gavrikov uh, managed uh, to use uh, his invasion in quite a spectacular way. Rook takes d7 and here uh, it turns out that uh, if black uh, takes the queen then rook takes uh, f7, king g8, rook g7, check, knight takes h8 and uh, black is about to get mated. Uh, we want to play rook g8 and if uh, black decides uh, to defend with uh, knight f6 then uh, there is a simple mate rook e7 this is not possible because of the mate and if he plays uh, king f8 then knight g6 king g8 uh, rook g7 mate so uh, he decided to take of course bishop c3 uh, king h7 and uh, just uh, to practice once again the indicators of danger let's uh, take a look uh, at the critical points this knight is a critical point we attack it once and it's defended once this pawn is a critical point 
This is a critical point. It's not defended. This is a critical point. This is an op a position. The, the king uh, is limited. Restricted pieces are also uh, indicators of danger. And uh, in, by thinking in this way, uh, you are going to immediately find the easy tactical shot. Knight takes g6. Queen takes b7. F, take, F takes g6 obviously doesn't does not work. Queen e6. So queen b7. Knight f8 was played. King g8. He took the queen. Rook b8. Queen e4. Knight c5. Uh, queen e1. And uh, black resigned. Because uh, this uh, h8 rook uh, is uh, is under attack. And uh, okay, white has a huge huge uh, material advantage. And uh, at the end, at the end, uh, I wanted to show one game by Alexei Shirov, in which uh, he was against Rajabov. Once again, uh, you will see what happens when you neglect uh, the moves of first necessity. And here, uh, let's uh, let's think for black. What is Black's main problem in this position and how he should uh, uh, solve it? Rajabov is playing with white, Shirov with black. This is a theoretical position. Do you have some ideas? Maybe if you uh, use my concept, you are going to find uh, the theoretical continuation which was not found during the game. Yes, I see that uh, Cheryl and uh, Jane uh, are pointing out uh, the right pr problem. It's black to move, uh, Curry. It's black to move. Okay, Alexander. So uh, I see that uh, you have the right uh, priorities. The d5 rook is restricted. This is a piece with a restricted mobility. And therefore, your your first priority uh, should be to uh, create some space for the rook. Uh, also, uh, you should uh, recon uh, with, uh, with the fact that this bishop is a bit restricted. Therefore, uh, white has the threat of g5. And here... Uh, Shirov just uh, selected uh, the wrong priorities, I think, uh, in order to prevent g5 and to stop white from uh, fighting for the e-file, black just played bishop h4, uh, taking the e1 square uh, from the rook. And uh, now rook e1 is impossible. Uh, but and uh, probably bet, uh, black uh, calculated a what uh, and he didn't find... Uh, in which way white will make use of the rook on d5. Uh, he trusted his calculation, which is not optimal, as we have uh, seen. Mm. So now the fight for the e-file is not a priority when uh, your rook is uh, about to get trapped. Even if you don't see a concrete way for your opponent, how he ex will exactly trap your rook, uh, you should uh, be... Uh, you should pay a lot of attention because uh, it's quite probable that some hidden resources uh, will appear. And here, uh, after bishop h4, let's just see how the game went. White played b4, taking the last two squares from the rook. Now c5 and a5 are not no longer available. Uh, 
he wants uh, to play bishop c4 in this position, therefore uh, Shirov played rook c8, but here a4, now uh, b5 square is no longer available for the rook and uh, I can play bishop e4, rook c3, here uh, maybe this was uh, a kind of a trap, uh, if uh, white goes for the immediate bishop e4, then d3 is a possible uh, option, freeing the d4 square for the, for the rook. But uh, Rajabov started with uh, king b2, and now uh, the black can uh, do nothing against bishop e4. f5 uh, was played, g takes f5, take, take, uh, and actually uh, the game uh, ended uh, rather quickly. Uh, after a5, uh, black just resigned. Now let's get back uh, to the important position uh, before black uh, played bishop h4. Here, uh, as uh, many of you uh, pointed out uh, in their answers, uh, the most logical option would have been g5, deflecting the f4 pawn and creating uh, space for the bishop and for the rook. Uh, we, we are going to free the e5 square for the rook. f takes g5, rook takes g5, bishop f5, rook e5. And now uh, uh, black pieces uh, are well established on dark squares and uh, I, I think that uh, black has quite a decent position. So uh, of course uh, this is a large topic, moves of first necessity. I hope that, uh, uh, that by looking at uh, my examples uh, you, you have gotten the, you have got the main point uh, in, in the PGM file, uh, I'm going to provide even more examples uh, with more explanations, but uh, the, the, the material which was covered is largely enough to at least to start thinking about uh, the, this concept, uh, which uh, will save you a lot of time and which uh, can enable you uh, to take uh, the right practical decision in a limited time. I hope that in this way uh, you are also going to boost uh, your intuition. Now guys, uh, I am at your disposal uh, to answer your questions uh, about uh, the topic or about uh, the forthcoming uh, training camp concerning the practical decision making. I remind you that uh, until uh, next Monday uh, there will be a discount uh, for re registering for the camp. Uh, maybe you have uh, seen uh, all the teachers which will be participating there. If you have some questions about the lesson or the camp or some general chess question, I will be more than happy uh, to, uh, to answer. Thank you, thank you, Xavier. I hope uh, the lecture uh, was useful for you. Okay, I have a question from John Wukum. Will the camp investigate how first priority moves are linked to other concepts, uh, concepts like prophylaxis? Uh, of course. Um, of course, uh, we we will speak about uh, prophylaxis in this camp, uh, and uh, there we will uh, speak about uh, priorities. Uh, even even in this le in this lesson, uh, you you can uh, you can see the connection because uh, indicators of danger uh, work very well. Uh, when uh, you want to apply the prophylactic thinking and in general uh, you should uh, give uh, priorities uh, to the priority to the, indi to the indicators of danger in this way uh, by uh, using uh, the moves of first necessity you apply uh, the prophylactic thinking at the same time Thank you uh, guys uh, for your kind words. Uh, once again, uh, feel free to uh, ask me uh, everything uh, if uh, such kind of lectures uh, is uh, useful for you and you find them useful. Uh, 
we will continue the tradition. I will try to make su such a presentations uh, more often. Thank you. Thank you, John Wuka. Okay, there, there is a, a question by Jean uh, Jirusek. When I buy a course, uh, I get a 35 euro voucher for your site when it expires. Uh, okay, the answer is simple. Uh, it never expires. Uh, it will be always valid. To what uh, to what level of players is the course targeted at? Uh, okay, I, I think that uh, a white uh, white range uh, of players uh, will be able to benefit uh, from the course, uh, starting from. Uh, 1800 uh, until uh, grandmasters okay uh, so uh, in the camp uh, we are going to uh, look at the following uh, lectures uh, just to uh, remind you uh, I will speak about uh, creating imbalances and uh, I will uh, present this uh, as a winning strategy uh, also, my colleague and partner in modern chess, uh, Peter Vnodov, uh, he will be speaking about uh, risk management, how to um, how to navigate the risk. Uh, another very important uh, winning strategy. Uh, the Greek uh, grandmaster uh, Ioannis Papayuano, uh, who will be a new teacher for us, uh, he will speak about the. Met uh, psychological and practical aspects of playing in equal positions uh, quite uh, an interesting uh, topic and very practical one Mikhail Marin uh, will uh, show you how to uh, identify the critical position uh, in the game and uh, how to take the right decision in such critical positions Dejan Boshkov uh, will speak about the uh, about calculation and uh, intuition this his lecture will be pretty much related to what uh, we have discussed uh, because uh, he will tell you when to when you need to calculate and when you should just trust uh, your intuition very very uh, interesting uh, subject and uh, of course um, if uh, Davorin Kulashevich will uh, will speak about how uh, modern engines uh, changed our decision making process and our understanding a lot of interesting con concepts will be included uh, in his lecture okay I have another question uh, what is the best way to deal uh, if one is playing for a win with Bogu Indian knight d2 or uh, bishop d2 Okay, I think that uh, this is mostly a matter of choice. Uh, I have uh, always uh, preferred uh, Bishop D2 uh, as a, this is this was always my my preference uh, because after uh, Knight D2 so, sometimes um, I I'm not uh, so comfortable with uh, all uh, these uh, setups. For example, take take bishop b7, and uh, in in many cases, uh, black is uh, just trying to attack on the king side. Uh, th therefore, I prefer to start with bishop d2 when the game uh, is getting more positional without uh, too much risk. White is playing uh, one game with a slight advantage. Okay, so uh, guys, if you don't have uh, more questions, uh, we can uh, finish uh, our lecture. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your participation. Thank you for all the questions uh, and kind words. Uh, it was a great pleasure for me uh, to be with you and uh, to share uh, a part of my expertise. and. Uh, I hope uh, 
I hope you, you have uh, enjoyed as much uh, as I did. All the best uh, to you and uh, to those of you uh, who will be participating in our training camp, I would say see you soon. All the best and bye.